Fred Thomas was an average teenager with a life packed full of the ordinary. His parents, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas, had recently decided to move from the bustling city to a tranquil, secluded town called Dunwich, hoping the change of scenery would provide a more serene environment for Fred's studies. They were a family of pragmatists, with the common belief that the hustle of city life was unnecessary noise that drowned out the truly important aspects of life. Despite being initially reluctant, Fred ultimately conceded, hoping the change would come with its own adventure. Fred was enrolled in Dunwich College, the only educational institution in town. His first sight of the college was something he could never forget. It was a grand structure, resplendent with its past glory and brimming with an old-world charm. The colossal stone edifice, partially covered by ancient ivy and lichen, hinted at centuries of academic pursuits within its weathered walls. The huge oak door, the towering bell tower, and the countless Gothic windows overlooking the central courtyard, all seemed to narrate countless stories of years passed by. The eerie silence that cloaked the massive structure seemed to throb with a tangible presence, making Fred's heart flutter with a combination of awe, apprehension, and excitement. His new classmates were a motley group of teenagers, all belonging to the families who had been residents of Dunwich for generations. There were very few newcomers in Dunwich, and the Thomases were a rare addition. Fred was initially received with curious stares and hushed whispers but was soon accepted as one of their own. Days turned into weeks, and soon Fred was settling into the rhythms of Dunwich College. The silent corridors became familiar, the ancient classrooms no longer felt as intimidating, and the somber library had become his favorite haunt. His fellow students were an eccentric yet endearing lot. Their camaraderie warmed him up to this strange, new place. As Fred became more entrenched in the local culture, he began to hear whispers of the inexplicable, eerie stories that shrouded the college. The chilling tales of spectral sightings and haunted classrooms passed down through generations. The most common tale was of a ghostly girl who supposedly haunted the school's bell tower, the dorm rooms, and the library. The narrative was a persistent presence in hushed lunchroom conversations and campfire tales. The spectral girl was allegedly a former student named Emily, who had mysteriously died decades ago. According to local lore, Emily was a bright, vivacious student who loved studying, but met with an unfortunate end. The details surrounding her death were murky, and as with any story passed down through generations, had taken on a macabre tone. The college became the center stage for Emily's tragic story, her ghost forever etched into its history. Fred, a firm non-believer in the supernatural, brushed off these stories as simple small-town superstitions. He laughed at the ghost stories, teasing his friends about their naive gullibility. However, his skepticism was about to be challenged. The first time Fred experienced something inexplicable was on a late Thursday evening. He was nestled in his dorm room, engrossed in a book. The dormitory, usually teeming with noise, was strangely quiet that night, the silence only broken by the distant hoot of an owl and the rustling leaves outside his window. Suddenly, he heard a soft sob echoing down the empty hallway. It was a strange, desolate sound that sent a shiver down his spine. Fred dismissed it initially, thinking his mind was playing tricks on him. But the sobbing continued, growing louder, clearer, and more sorrowful. It was the sound of a girl crying. Curiosity peaked, he opened his door and peeked into the corridor. The hallway was desolate, bathed in the pale, flickering glow of the old lights. The sobbing was clearer now, and yet, there was no one there. Fred felt a chill creeping up his spine. He called out, his voice echoing down the deserted corridor, but received no response. As quickly as it had started, the crying ceased, leaving behind an unnerving silence. Fred stood there, in the dimly lit corridor, battling the cold dread spreading through him. This was his first encounter with the unseen. Fred's initial encounter with the unexplainable was only the beginning. From that night onwards, the dormitory seemed to come alive after dark with strange occurrences. 
there were instances when Fred would be jolted awake by the abrupt fluttering of his curtains despite the windows being closed. He would hear whispers at the edge of his hearing, fleeting words that dissipated as soon as he tried to focus on them. His books would fall off his shelves at random intervals, even when there was no one nearby. His room light would flicker and dim, even after he'd replaced the bulb several times. The most alarming incidents were the fleeting sightings of shadowy figures at the corner of his eyes. When he would turn around, there would be no one. At first, Fred convinced himself that these were all figments of his imagination, a result of the ghost stories he'd been hearing. But as the incidents increased in frequency, even his skepticism started to waver. He felt a constant sense of being watched, and the once comforting silence of his dorm room now felt oppressive and alive with an unseen presence. Battling his fear and skepticism, Fred decided to share his experiences with his friends. To his surprise, he was met with concern instead of the ridicule he expected. His friends, all believers of the local lore, encouraged Fred to delve into the past of Dunwich College. They hoped that understanding the tragic tale of Emily could perhaps provide a solution to Fred's haunting experiences. Over the next few weeks, Fred, along with his friends, began to piece together Emily's story. They combed through old town records, newspaper clippings, and anecdotes from the elderly townsfolk. The story they discovered was a tragic tale of bullying, betrayal, and a mysterious death. Emily was indeed a bright, passionate student who fell victim to relentless bullying. The culmination of her torment was her tragic fall from the school's bell tower, a spot she often frequented for its solitude. Her death was ruled as an accident, but the students and staff, who knew of her torments, speculated whether it was indeed an accident or something far more sinister. Emily's untimely death had left an indelible mark on Dunwich College, turning her into a melancholic legend. While piecing together Emily's story, Fred stumbled upon a name that repeatedly appeared in the archives, a certain Mr. Harold. He was a stern, middle-aged man who had been a teacher at Dunwich during Emily's time. The more Fred delved into the archives, the more the name kept surfacing, often in conjunction with Emily's. It turned out Mr. Harold was known for his authoritarian behavior and had a reputation for being particularly hard on his students. Some alumni even claimed that he was the main source of Emily's bullying. Fred couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something more to Mr. Harold than met the eye. He decided to take the matter to someone who might have been acquainted with him, someone who had been part of the college for decades, the college's old librarian, Mrs. Constance. Mrs. Constance was a petite, bespectacled woman in her late seventies. She was a treasure trove of the college's history, having served as its librarian for more than fifty years. When Fred approached her with his findings about Mr. Harold and his possible connection with Emily, the old librarian sighed deeply, a cloud of sorrow passing over her gentle features. She revealed that Mr. Harold was a particularly harsh teacher, known for his strict discipline and often cruel methods of maintaining it. Emily, being a bright and outspoken student, frequently ended up on his radar. Mr. Harold took an unsettling interest in disciplining Emily, with many incidents of verbal abuse and public humiliation. Mrs. Constance also mentioned an incident that had somehow escaped public attention at the time. On the fateful day of Emily's fall, a student had claimed to have seen Emily and Mr. Harold engaged in a heated argument near the bell tower, just before the tragedy. However, Mr. Harold had firmly denied it, and in the chaos that followed Emily's death, the matter was left uninvestigated. Hearing this revelation, Fred felt a chill run down his spine. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place, and he couldn't help but suspect Mr. Harold's role in Emily's tragic fate. With this newfound knowledge, Fred couldn't help but feel a sense of guilt. His initial dismissal of the ghost stories, the skepticism, and laughter all felt disrespectful now. He realized that the haunting occurrences were likely Emily trying to communicate, trying to bring her story to light. Late one night, as he sat in his room mulling over Emily's story, he felt a sudden drop in temperature. 
A sense of dread washed over him, the familiar signs of an unseen presence. The soft sobbing sound echoed through the room, much like the first time he'd experienced it. But this time, instead of fear, Fred felt a strange sense of understanding. He called out softly, Emily, is that you? The sobbing stopped abruptly, followed by a palpable shift in the atmosphere. A shadowy figure materialized near the foot of his bed, a spectral silhouette of a young girl. Fred could hardly believe his eyes. There she was, Emily, looking exactly like she did in the old photographs he'd seen in the archives. For a brief moment, their eyes met. He saw an unimaginable depth of sorrow and an earnest plea for help in her translucent eyes. Before he could say anything, she vanished, leaving behind a heavy silence. Motivated by the spectral encounter, Fred was more determined than ever to seek justice for Emily. He gathered his friends, shared his experiences, and his suspicions about Mr. Harold. They decided to take the matter to the local police. Armed with the accounts from Mrs. Constance, the testimonies of several old students about Mr. Harold's behavior, and the overlooked witness who'd seen the heated argument on the day of Emily's death, they urged the police to reopen Emily's case. The police, although skeptical, agreed to look into the matter, given the mounting evidence. The subsequent investigation brought to light the ugly truth. Mr. Harold had indeed been responsible for Emily's fall from the bell tower that fateful day. The stern teacher, now a frail old man living in a care home, was taken into custody. Emily's death was reclassified from a tragic accident to a case of manslaughter. The news spread throughout Dunwich, bringing a mixture of relief and sorrow to its inhabitants. Emily's tragic tale had finally seen the light of day, and her tormentor had been brought to justice. In the days following Mr. Harold's arrest, the atmosphere at Dunwich College changed. The centuries-old structure seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, the oppressive silence replaced by a comforting calm. Fred noticed that the strange occurrences in his dorm room stopped completely. Late one night, as Fred was preparing to sleep, he felt a familiar chill. He looked up to see Emily standing at the foot of his bed. Her spectral form was as clear as before, but her eyes were different. The deep sorrow had been replaced by a gentle relief. She gave Fred a faint smile, the first he'd ever seen, and mouthed a silent thank you before fading away for the last time. Fred's life returned to its normal rhythm after Emily's departure. He felt a pang of sadness but also a sense of accomplishment. He had managed to help a tormented soul find her peace. Dunwich College no longer carried the heavy air of sorrow, instead, it felt lighter, more peaceful. The legend of Emily became a tale of redemption, the story of a ghost who could finally rest in peace, thanks to a group of determined students. Fred was hailed as a local hero, a tag he wore with a humble smile. The ghost stories of Dunwich College took on a new meaning, no longer tales of fear but stories of justice and closure. As he sat in the library one day, Fred couldn't help but glance at the bell tower visible from the window. He smiled picturing Emily finally at peace. The college's bell chimed, its melodious sound echoing across the campus, almost as if singing a farewell to Emily, a final goodbye from Dunwich College.